and welcome to a new video. It has been a little while. I'm hoping to try to put out lots of new videos now, now that I have finally have a little bit of time off. But anyway, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Anissa. Today I'm making a very simple pizza dough recipe. Very few ingredients. It's very easy to make. And let's just get started. So I have about 650 grams of strong white bread flour. You can use plain flour or all-purpose flour. To that flour, I'm just going to add two and a half teaspoons of salt. And I'm just going to put that aside for a moment. And I'm going to now proof my yeast. I always like to proof it first, check that it's still active. Because I don't use yeast very often, it can, I sometimes worry if it's just been sat there for a while. So I have 330 millilitres of warm water. You want it to be nice and warm to the touch when you touch it with your finger, but not too hot. Then you're going to risk killing your yeast and you're not going to have a nice pizza dough. So to this, we're going to add two teaspoons of sugar. This is just going to help activate your yeast. I'm doing quite a heat teaspoons. We're going to stir that in. Once your sugar has been dissolved, we're going to add a packet of instant dry yeast. This should be around seven grams, six to seven grams if you're using the tub. It's about a heat teaspoon of yeast. And we're just going to stir that in until it's fully dissolved. And then I'm just going to let this water sit for around 10 minutes and give that time for the yeast to just fully activate itself. You'll know when it's ready because you'll get little bubbles forming and you can hear it like Shh. and that's when you know the yeast is alive. If nothing happens in that time, give it another 10 minutes. If still there's nothing, I suggest you just get rid of the yeast, get rid of the water, buy some new and start again. I can see little bubbles forming on top of the water so I know my yeast is ready and it's active. So I'm going to just give that a little stir and we're going to start to prepare our dough. So I'm just going to mix that salt in, obviously using clean hands. I'm going to mix that salt in. I'm going to make a little well in the centre. And using very good quality olive oil, I try to, well, I always try to use a better quality for pizza dough because that's going to be what gives your pizza dough your flavour. And I'm going to add around four tablespoons. It's a lot of oil, but it's going to help the dough not stick to your hands. And again, it's really all about that flavour. I'm just going to add that in, give that a little mix around. I'm just going to make a second well, and I'm going to add my liquid. I like to add it in little amounts at a time. I'm just going to mix that in. I find this part quite cathartic, making pizza dough. You can take out all your frustrations of the day out on this pizza dough. Managers annoying you at work? Make some pizza dough. I'm going to mix all that liquid. So I've just added a little more water. I can tell the dough is just a touch on the dry side. The dough is roughly combined and it looks like I have enough liquid in there. I'm going to start kneading it. So I'm just going to get out onto a clean well floured work surface where I'm going to try to start working the dough. This is just going to help the texture of my dough because I want a really nice chewy crust on my pizza and to do that you have to work the gluten a little bit so it's sticking just a touch. I'm going to knead it for around 10 to 15 minutes using this motion where I'm kind of stretching and pulling the dough. Oh, 10 minutes of kneading later and I'm finally over the pumpkin ticket I got last week. You know your dough's ready when it's looking really nice and smooth and it's just springing back like a brand new mattress. When you poke your finger in you can see the dough just springs right back up. So and I like to keep my dough just very slightly sticky just slightly. I feel like I prefer the flavour of the pizza then. It's more chewy, the crust, I, I just love it like that. So I'm going to form it into a nice little ball. Just try to tuck it roughly in. 
And we're going to put this into a well-oiled bowl. So again, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to my bowl. Well, when I say a little, it's quite a lot. But this is going to stop my dough sticking to the bowl because now we're going to allow it to rise and proof and let that yeast get really activated. So I'm just turning the dough in the oil and coating the outside. This stops your dough drying out whilst it does its own thing. I'm just going to coat the outside of the bowl because as that dough will expand, it's going to stick to the sides. And then I'm going to cover this up with a bit of cling film. Now, when I make pizza dough, I like to make mine overnight. I like to keep my dough in the fridge overnight and give it a good almost 24 hours to just really proof and let that yeast work. The longer you leave it, the more flavorful your pizza is going to be. You don't want to leave it for too long, but I suggest 24 to 48 hours in the fridge for your really nice flavorful pizza. Of course, if you want to use it instantly, you don't have that time to wait. There's no problem with that. Just wait for your dough to rise and double in size to about an hour. And then you can punch it out, form your pizza dough and it's ready to go. With cling foam, this is really going to stop my pizza dough drying out. Give it a second wrap, just in case. And that's my dough's ready for the fruit fridge. Now the next day, my dough has been resting in the fridge overnight. It hasn't quite doubled in size. It's going to take a while if it's in the fridge. But what I am going to do is I'm going to turn this dough out onto a board and I'm going to cut it in half because I'm going to use half of my dough today and the other half tomorrow. Cut it in half again, where this should make about two lots of pizza dough for myself because I, I like to make mine very thin when I make my pizzas so this is going to get cut into half again I'm just going to shape these into little balls so I want these to double in size because if not fully had time to proof in the fridge. I'm covering half of my dough over with cling film again and this is going to go back in the fridge. Today it's going to go into another bowl and I'm going to cover it up with cling film again because it will really take another a couple of hours to fully double in size. Remember they're still very cold from the fridge so I need to wait for the dough to warm up first. Whilst my dough is rising, I'm just preparing the tomato sauce for my pizza. Um, you can just use passata straight onto the pizza as it is. I like to cook mine a little bit on slow heat and then I add a bit of salt and oregano just to get rid of that extra moisture that's in there. I don't want a soggy pizza dough. So I've just got this on a low heat. I'm adding a teaspoon of sugar and some salt and I'll add the oregano later. I have been letting my tomato sauce bubble away for around 20 to 25 minutes. It's reduced a little and I'm adding a teaspoon of oregano and I'm going to mix that in. I'm just going to let this tomato sauce cool down a little now and then I will start preparing my pizzas. So my dough has fully doubled in size, which is when it is ready to be formed into your pizzas. So I've got two pieces here. I'm just going to separate them out in the bowl. Whilst I separate them, it will help just to knock the air out a little. And before I tip it out onto my table, I'm going to sprinkle some coarse or fine semolinas with two, just to stop it sticking. Now I'm using semolina instead of flour because I'm going to be using pizza stone. A pizza stone gets a lot hotter than a pizza tray and I find sometimes flour can burn when I'm using a stone. Of course if you're using a baking tray you can just stick to flour that's fine. It's going to form it into a rough little bowl before I start forming my pizza. Now I don't have any particular technique for how I use mine. If you want you can use a rolling pin. I like to use my fingers just to push the pizza out and I start from the middle and move my way out to the edges so I can still keep 
a crust on my pizza. Now I'm going to try to work quite quickly here because I don't want the pizza sticking to my table. Plus I have my pizza stone already in the oven. If you're using a stone, I recommend you let it heat for around 25 to 30 minutes until it's really hot and that way it's ready for your pizza. So as I said, just starting from the middle and sort of pushing the way out to the edges. From time to time I'm just lifting and turning my pizza dough, just double checking that it's not sticking. I use my fingers because I like when it keeps those little air bubbles in places. Pressed out my pizza dough, I've put it on some greaseproof paper to make it easier for me to lift onto my stone. Add some fresh mozzarella. I like to dab my mozzarella as much as I can because I find fresh mozzarella tends to be quite wet and I don't want to make my pizza soggy as it cooks. So because I like plenty of cheese and I like the flavour that it gives, I'm also going to add some cheddar cheese. Now I love a bit of sweet corn on my pizza, you can obviously make yours how you like it. I feel like I want to make one margarita pizza and one sweet corn and pepperoni. I'm going to add some pepperoni. Now this is the part I never enjoyed because I find it really stressful. I already had some burnt on tomato sauce from the last one really I made when I was testing out my pizza stone. And let's hope I can get this pizza onto my stone without tearing it. Piece proof paper onto a wooden board, it might help me to be able to slide it off a bit easier. But it seems like this, <laughs> the toppings are sliding off a bit easier than the pizza right now, so I'm just going to try to move Okay. And we're going to quickly just watch our fingers. Let's call this the practice one. Attempt botched slightly, but we know to add a bit more flour for the second attempt. This is going to go straight into the oven now whilst it's still hot. This first pizza turned out much better than I could have hoped. The crust is so nicely browned and it's bubbling deliciously. And I'm going to finish it with some extra dried oregano on top. So we're going to try for round two, getting our second pizza onto the stone. The first pepperoni pizza smelt so good, I just wanted to make a second instead of a margarita. I'm just going to give it a little shaky shake, and it's I can see it's sliding much easier than it did last time at least. I put much more flour and semolina on the board this time to really help it drop off. Come on. Bit better and just drag these toppings back. You can see the dough is really starting to rise nicely. I'm really liking this pizza stone. My second pizza is ready, and really, I'm so happy that I bought this pizza stone. It's helped the edges cook so much better than it was on a regular pizza tray, and it cooks a lot faster. You can serve this however you like it, make it add some fresh basil. I'm just going to add some dry oregano 
and that's really all there is to it. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please leave a like, subscribe, subscribe, click that notification bell, and I hope to see you again soon.